You know what the hardest part of this gig is? Time. Not so much trying to cut a topic down to five minutes. No, that's usually the easy part. The hard part is when you realize that a perfectly good topic just isn't enough to fill out a whole episode. Over the months, I've built up a pretty good list of these not-enough-for-one-show musings, and since we just had a super-duper serious one last week, I figured this was as good a time as any to collect a whole bunch of them into one show. Think of this as a uh, topic buffet, I guess. All right, here we go. Donald Trump pretending to run for president as a publicity stunt for his crappy reality show does not bother me. Rich idiots with no taste wasting their money pumps billions back into the economy. Always has. What does bother me is that the make-believe joke candidate isn't really acting or speaking all that differently from some of the real candidates. Nintendo is probably going to reveal a new console at E3, and everyone is already freaking out and trying to conjure speculative data out of thin air. Hey guys, let me save you some trouble. Whatever it is, it's probably going to be priced and designed to turn a profit right out of the gate, built around some sort of control or interface variation that encourages exclusivity and not be as powerful as hardcore tech heads want it to be. There will be much pissing and moaning about all of this, snarky blog posts, and lots of quote-unquote leaked whining from third-party developers. And none of it's going to register or matter, because they're going to make a Mario game, a Zelda game, a Metroid game, a Kirby game, a revival of something classic we haven't seen in a decade, and probably another Smash Brothers game, and thus continue to loom large and ominous over the medium for another generation or so, because that's the way it is. There, I just saved you a year's worth of gaming news watching. Taco Bell is test marketing a new type of taco shell that's supposed to be made out of Doritos. Now, I'm no nutritional scientist, but doesn't made out of Doritos just mean it's a regular hard taco shell but with cheese dust on it? Either way, yeah, I want one. I don't care what anyone says. The Simpsons is still funny. It's not mid-90s cleverest thing on TV funny. It's not rerun to the point of memorization over and over on Adult Swim in a late-night time frame ideally conducive to the schedules of substance of using college kids funny. I'll grant you that, but it's funny funny, to me anyway. Sony Computer Entertainment CEO Jack Tretton says that his competitors' handhelds are babysitting tools, and that a self-respecting 20-year-old is too old for that. You know what, Sony? As douchey a way to go about it as this is, writing off the youth market completely and selling the PSP exclusively as a grown-up device might actually be a good business decision. You know what might help with that good business decision, though? If the spokesman for your self-respecting grown-up handheld line wasn't an obnoxious grade school kid begging for a kick in the teeth. G.I. Joe 2 is being directed by John Chu, who says he wants to make it gritty. Mr. Chu was previously best known as the director of one of the Step Up movies and the Justin Bieber documentary. I have no additional comment on that. Just thought you'd like to know. If they were the only two choices, I'd take evil but brilliant over dumb but good-natured. Every. Single. Time. Good is nice, but it has very few practical applications. Brilliance, on the other hand, has nothing but practical applications. Fortunately for me, or rather for everyone else, those aren't the only two choices. Most of the time. The guys who wrote Transformers 2 are now claiming that the film was as bad as it was because the Hollywood writer's strike forced them to rush into production with an unfinished script. Well, that's great and all, guys, but it still doesn't explain why the first one sucked. People seem to get really bent out of shape every time I use this 90s sucked picture, or at least they start demanding that I offer some kind of point-by-point -point breakdown as to why they sucked, or rather why the 80s and or 2000s were so much better. Uh... Well, because in the 80s I was a comfortably joyful child living through the golden age of home video games and nerd movies, in the 2000s I'm a grown man whose job exclusively entails watching and opining on movies, well, in the 90s I was an awkward, miserable teenager. That's why. It's, uh, yeah, pretty much entirely subjective. I mean, that's, you know, kind of how opinion shows generally work. So, yeah. There's something like 5,000 killer shark movies, and even more if you count every movie that's technically about some other kind of killer water creature, but still basically a killer shark movie. Here's what I'd like to know. How come they've never done one with a killer dolphin? I mean, go look this stuff up. Dolphins pull some seriously nasty stuff in the wild, but everyone assumes they're really friendly because, well, they're always smiling. Except they aren't smiling. Their jaws are just kind of shaped like that all the time. Dolphins are basically the Joker of the ocean. And, yeah, I think we're about done on time. You know, that was kind of fun. I have to do that again next time the micro-premise file gets a little full. Next week, something we can get a whole episode out of. I'm Bob, and that was Many Small Pieces of the Big Picture.